You know, stunts like that make for great television, but employing techniques like that, I don't think work very well for mastering because we kind of need to know where we're going. You know, when we're doing the thing with the thing and you, you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever used Isotope products, then you know exactly what this is. It's the tonal balance curve. You've seen it inside of ozone. You've seen it inside of neutron. It's a meter that gives you a snapshot of the tonal balance of your project and lets you compare it to industry averages to help identify problems and really just to meet targets with your projects. Let me get this thing out of the way. Well, this great tool has been applied to a standalone application called Audio Lens. This is an application. It runs outside of your DAW. It's a standalone app and it listens to all of the audio in your system. It could be Spotify, it could be YouTube, it could be different files you have on your system with the idea that it creates references. Now, if you think in terms of mastering, you can capture this tonal balance curve and compare it to your project, and there's different ways to get your project more in line with these reference points. Also, you can apply it to individual instruments, and yes, this applies to all different instruments, but I am a guitar player, and any tool that allows me to listen and capture the essence of a guitar tone well, that's something that I want to know about, and I'm going to show you how we do that. Anyways, let's jump in and check out Audio Lens. Running Audio Lens is really simple. It's a standalone app that you run alongside your DAW or any app you use to play music. It listens to any audio running on your system and can analyze it simply by clicking the capture button. This creates a spectral profile based on the audio's EQ, dynamics, loudness, and stereo width. So unlike other reference tool plugins, you don't need to load any files into it. You play audio from any source on your computer and Audio Lens can listen to and analyze it. It doesn't actually capture the audio itself, just the spectral profiles, and these can all be saved within the app. Now, once you've captured that spectral profile, there's a number of different ways you can apply that information. You don't actually need any other Isotope products. Uh, if you've got a mastering chain in your DAW, let's say you've got an EQ, you can run Audio Lens on the side. You can make adjustments to the EQ to try and balance your track to get it closer to that spectral profile that you've chosen that you think best matches your track. However, if you're using Ozone, then there's a much more powerful connection between Audio Lens and Ozone. Let me demonstrate that. I've created some references of some popular tracks I think best represent my track, Fade. Sadly, YouTube may block this video if I play them, but I can show you the different curves here. Similar genres, but you can see how different the curves are. I can run the AI Assistant in Ozone to get a good mastering starting point, or I can reference the spectral profiles I captured with Audio Lens. Ozone utilizes this profile to create my mastering chain. And nothing is hidden. I can access the full mastering chain, and I can tweak each module to give my track what it needs. But let's listen to how each profile affects my mix. Now, the secret sauce for me inside Audio Lens is the ability to capture the spectral profile of individual instruments and my personal interest, which is guitar. Now, if you have the individual stems or if there's a section of the song where the guitar is isolated, using the same steps, you can capture the spectral profile of that guitar tone. The difference is in how we apply it. We can now load up Neutron and recall the spectral profile the same way. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. It really helps this channel, and I really appreciate that. If you want to jump into some deeper conversations with me and some of my friends, I've got the Lonely Rockers Club on Facebook. Link is in the description. Hope to see you there. For this example, I have found the isolated guitars for ACDC's Highway to Hell. Replicating the tone exactly is difficult, but I want to see if we can capture the essence of the tone with Audio Lens and Neutron. To start, I recorded the part driving the clean channel of this Marshall with a boost pedal to create some natural breakup. I ran Audio Lens and created a spectral profile for the isolated guitars from ACDC's track. I then loaded Neutron and applied the ACDC spectral profile to my guitar part. Let's take a listen.
you know, that's not bad. I mean, considering these two tones probably started very different. I'm using a different Marshall than I'm sure uh, ACDC was using for that track. And actually that source wasn't that good. But the idea is it's taking the essence of that curve to sort of find something that works well with my track. And of course, working in the context of a mix, if you have access to isolated tracks can sort of help you discover some curves that might work well for your tracks if you're looking to achieve something specific. Definitely something to dive deeper into and I definitely will. Well, we've looked at a mastering application. We've looked at a guitar application. So what do I really think about audio lens? Well, I know there's a perception with YouTubers who are doing reviews on products, especially when we get copies for free that we're just saying nice things uh, just to satisfy the companies who are giving us those products. It's, it's a fine line that I know a lot of YouTubers uh, ride. Now I use Isotope in all my productions and I was doing so before I started my YouTube channel. So the fact that I've had opportunities to review their products, there's never any pressure to do so. Uh, but I want to be fully transparent specifically about this particular product because uh, I do think it's an excellent tool when you use it properly. Now, using it in a mastering context, having a reference, I mean, having a reference at any point in your production, we use reference tracks uh, when we're mixing, we, we should be using reference tracks when we're mastering. Now, tools like this, I personally think are really designed for those of us who are not quite at the, the higher stages of being a professional. You know, we're working at home. Uh, the rooms that we're working in are not necessarily optimized for music production. Uh, if we're newer to mixing, our ears are not as finely tuned as someone who's been working in the profession and, and is a true professional. Because I've often said these tools actually help professionals work faster. I don't think I'm the one who should be making that claim. A professional is gonna determine what tools that they need and what they, they use. And often many of them are creatures of habit and they know what works for them. But what I can say is that if you're working in an environment that's um, not truly optimized for music production and you're learning, there's gonna be gaps in your understanding. There's gonna be gaps in what you're hearing, especially as much as I've tried to acoustically treat this room, it's far from perfect. So there's definitely gaps in what I'm hearing. So I definitely need reference tools to help me get my mixes and my masters to completion. Otherwise I'm just spitting around and around in circles. So it's actually integral to have some kind of reference tool. Now Audio Lens is cool it's because as it can function in the background, it can be on all the time and it's listening to any of your system audio, whether it's coming from Spotify, whether it's coming from YouTube or some files that you have on your system. So it gives you that perspective. But I want to be very careful how I say that because used the wrong way, Audio Lens is going to get you into trouble. Now, if you're using it as a mastering tool, that means you've got a mix that you're happy with and now you're referencing other master tracks. Because let's face it, when you're listening to Spotify or using Spotify as a reference or any professional tracks, these are mastered, right? If you're using them as a reference tool for your mixes, it's not really an apples to apples comparison because you're taking a master track and using it as a reference for a mix. But if we're talking specifically about mastering, now we can listen to all sorts of professional mixes, get you know an idea of the tonal balance curve and get an idea of where ours needs to be. But if you're using it in the mastering stage, and you're compensating for things that are not working in the mix simply by putting an EQ in your mastering chain and trying to correct for those deficiencies, it's not gonna improve your mix. And that's something that I worry about. People will sort of get into their heads. Well, well, they'll just throw an EQ in their mastering. They'll match the tonal balance curve and everything is gonna be perfect. That's not the case because if you have deficiencies in your mix, if you got some issues in the bottom end, maybe frequencies are can canceling each other out. That's the reason why you're losing energy in the bottom end. You're not gonna fix that with an EQ in mastering. So it's really, really critical to understand that. But if you're working with a mix that you're happy with, and now you're comparing it to other master tracks, Audio Lens is gonna be an invaluable tool in the studio to help you figure out you know, where that mastering needs to be. Hopefully you're already on the road and pushing your production in that direction, and Audio Lens is gonna help you take that to completion. Now, if you're using it as a mixing reference, sort of the same thing. Don't compensate with one EQ on your master bus to fix all of your problems. Think about it this way, you know, using the right tool in the wrong scenario. If you're using a hammer when you need a saw, you'll get something done, but probably not the thing that you intended to get done. And I think Audio Lens is a perfect example of that. It's a great tool that can hurt you if you're using it in the wrong situation. So keep that in mind. Now, other areas where I've taken a look at using Audio Lens is, you know, isolating individual tracks. Uh, if you get some stems from popular tracks, sometimes they're available on YouTube and say, hey, how did they EQ that guitar? How is that fitting in the mix? I found that I could listen to isolated stems of different instruments and look at those curves just to get some ideas. Again, you don't wanna just match it and assume it's gonna work, it's a reference tool. But I think that's really the power of Audio Lens is that it can work in conjunction with your DAW as it is working on the outside and it's gonna give you those references, but make sure 
you're using it in the right places because it can get you into trouble if you think a simple EQ is going to fix all of your problems because it won't. It's a reference tool. And how you correct those problems, well, that's how you're going to improve your skills as a mixer and a mastering engineer. Everything has to happen in process. But I think AudioLens is a great resource, a great tool to have. And at the time of the, this video, I mean, Isotope is offering it for free for the first two weeks. So they have full confidence that people are going to embrace it. And anyone who's used Isotope products in the past, they'll understand the power of features like this. And having it at your uh, fingertips is certainly going to help you Again, using it in the right place. Anyways, I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, any thoughts, that's what the comment section is for. Uh, if you wanna support this channel, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. If you wanna do a deeper dive with me, I'm on Patreon. I have affiliate links, I have merch. All that information is in the description down below. But the most important thing is to check out another video. I've got one waiting for you right here. And remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. I look forward to seeing you again in another video.